Once you have enough information about your client's requirements, it's time to move on to the research part. A lot of designers make the mistake of thinking. They know everything about what the client wants, and when the client doesn't like what they present, they're confused and often angry at the clients. This builds up resentment between the client and the designer. And what happens is you lose interest in the project and stop putting your best into it. It shouldn't be this way. A lot of this could be easily solved by conducting research. Research is a crucial part of the logo design process, and it must not be ignored at all. It will help you understand what to design, why to design it, how it will affect the brand. You shouldn't completely rely on the information the client has provided to you. You need to dig in deeper and truly understand the business. Start with answering some important questions about the business. What are they? What is their product? Why do they exist? What are their goals? What personality like? A lot of this information will be provided to you via clients from the logo questionnaire. It will help you understand your brand at exclusion. Besides this, you also need to research the competition. Try to understand the target market thoroughly by making a list of the competitors. Make notes of what their brand looks and feels like, what kind of visual language they have, and how do they communicate with their customers. Lastly, you need to understand their target audience. You can do this by creating user personas. If you don't know what a user persona is, here's a short definition. A user persona is a fictional representation of an ideal customer offer business. Personas are usually created from the data collected from multiple people. In a logo design project, you can either collect this data from your client or by researching their competitors. Here's a user personas I created for the example project that we discussed in the previous video. This persona does an excellent job of explaining the ideal customer. You choose the individual demographics, gold needs, frustrations, and daily activities. To create a user persona by yourself, you should add the following key information. Introduction, also called the header. This section should contain the name, image, and a short summary of the individual. Demographic profile. Here you add the personal and professional background along with the environment. So things like age, gender, ethnicity, education, job, occupation, and devices they use. Their interests all go here. End goal. The end goal should consist of information about what the individual wants to accomplish. This is the real meat of the user persona, as if the motivating factor that inspires action. In our case, Joan Deb is to use the screen tap to connect with people around his a day of life. Lastly, adding us an idea of the individual's daily life. Add some narrative to the context on how they would interact with the brand or its products. Creating user personas can be confusing though, because there's a lot of guesswork involved and you don't know if you're correct. It's always best to discuss the user persona with your client too. See if you're on the right page on what they think that ideal customer looks like. Now you're done with the resource. It's time to piece it all together. Before you move on to the brainstorming phase, I always create a band research document where I note down all my findings and research. This helps me organize all my research and access it easily whenever I want to. Here's an example of how my brand research document looks like. You can download this template to create your own research document. You can also find a user persona template in description of the video to create user personas really quickly.